Uh, Tommy Lee, one of my favorite drummers, of course, of Motley Crue fame, uh, is uh, doing drums on the album. We're going to be playing... Uh, part of some of the songs here today, but not in their entirety, because that'll send the computer bots crazy out there on different internet platforms. Um, Billy Corgan is our guest, or as I say it in Texas, drawl, where we butcher names, Billy Corrigan, Billy Corgan. Leanne came here and said, you know, you're friends with him. You ought to pronounce his name right. Billy Corgan. And he's not in a hotel room. He's flown in and landed. Uh, he is in the airport right now. Uh, and uh, so I can't wait to have him back in studio next time he's in Austin. Uh, he's a regular listener, and he's just a great guy. I learned that he was a listener through a man cow, a, a fellow friend. And he's a really smart guy, one of the smartest people I've talked to, not just in music or entertainment, but period. And, and uh, Billy Corgan has actually taught me quite a a bit about perspectives and how to see the world uh, and has helped me mature some and I think that's why out of the blue for the last decade or so you see just random hit pieces even though there's no scandals no dirt nothing that's why you see Anderson Cooper, admittedly, of the CIA attacking him. Now, that's why you see MSNBC saying snippy things, Rolling Stone saying snippy things. It's because he's outside of the system. He didn't play ball with them. He spoke out about the dumbing down of music with MTV and more. And they don't like smart people who have the power of reaching tens of millions who've sold 40 million albums. Just like Dave Mustaine, their views may differ a little bit, but they agree on fighting tyranny. There's a global government. There's social engineering. Look at the demonization of him. Because if you let one ant stand up, they might all stand up. To quote, is it a bug's life? This is what we're talking about here. So he's joining us from the airport. I'll keep him to about 40 after, 45 after or so, so he can get on his next plane or get on down the road. He was going to be on with us yesterday, but I had a family emergency had to take care of. Uh, Billy Corgan, thank you so much for coming on with us. Oh, thank you, Alex. Always a pleasure to talk to you. You heard my intro there. There's so much to get into. Let's talk about Anderson Cooper first. Not that he even matters, has almost no viewers, dinosaur media. Uh, but at the same time, it's so clear that every time you've got an album about to come out, the hit pieces begin because they want to slap you down. Yeah, well, it's pretty strange. Uh, I don't know if your listeners know the context of this, but I did a... Uh, a, a cover for a charity uh, called Cause Chicago. It's a no-kill shelter model. Very proud. Um, I've helped raise, uh, along with uh, my partner in the band, Jeff, a quarter million dollars for the charity. Uh, one of my proudest things that I've ever done uh, is being involved in, in animal rights issues. And uh, it was about six months ago. You know, the image went viral. It's me and my rescue cats on the cover of the magazine. Never in a million years did I think I'd start getting attacked. And out of nowhere, four or five months later, there I am being made fun of uh, no context for the fact that it's a charity magazine. Basically presented as if I've fallen so far off the celebrity radar that I'm reduced to doing a cat magazine. Then, uh, then ties it into a kind of a wh wh where has he gone? What you know? Wh you know? Whatever happened to him? Kind of thing. Turn kind of make mocking my participation in professional wrestling. No mention of my new album. No mention of my successes. Uh, nothing. It's as, as if I was some you know sort of a, I just disappeared off the you know the celebrity map. Very strange. And I think he's probably been a bit shocked by the reaction uh, because, A, I fought back, uh, which you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to take your licks and just uh, put your tail between your legs because the mighty CNN has spoken. Uh, and on top of that, now a lot of animal rights people raised up and started poking him in the eye because, uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's something that, should, you know, uh, that's, a, that's a demarcation line that should be left alone. People doing charity work. Um, it really is emblematic of the sickness of our culture. And by the way, you don't brag about that a lot, but I've seen it. You, you help a lot of charities out there, and you were helping save and rescue cats, raising and other you know tons of money, and you know really working in the community, like I know you quietly do in and around Chicago. Uh, and then you're a bad guy. No, it's because you are a good guy and are quietly out there working while doing other big things in media that they're scared of you. It's because they know they don't control you, and you know what's going on. Yeah, I think it is very interesting to see these kind of uh, assassins come out of the woodwork. Um, this is probably the most well-received album I've had in about 20 years. Um, and I've been through a lot, you know, uh, in my own way. And, uh, you know, I've shot myself in the foot like any good artist would. But I, I, I've seen to kind of dial it back in. Uh, the, the music business is coming up back around me. And it's amazing because all of a sudden then you're, uh, you know, you're, then you're at a target because, you know, you, you have power. You have amassed power again. Um, it's the kind of power that's very threatening to those systems. They do not want outliers. They love Muppets. They love people who 
toe the party line. Um, you know, and, and, and I think it's, uh, I, you know, look, you know, your audience doesn't need an education on this. Uh, they're, they're more aware than any audience in the world uh, how these things work. So uh, we don't have to go on about it. But, I mean, I think it's very obvious that, uh, you know, here they come. You know, I, I, I can, you know, I, the agenda starts to poke out. Um, I just had an interview uh, about a week ago. The guy was asking me about Edward Snowden. <laughs> here's, here's, here's the line of questioning out of nowhere in the middle of an interview about my, my, my new album. Uh, do you believe Edward Snowden was a hero? Yes. Why? Because he did the right thing. Next question. Uh, would you do the same? Okay. I told the guy to go, you know what, himself. I said, am I running for president? I mean, what kind of, what kind of line of questioning is that? I'm promoting an album. <laughs> Well, and the reason we raise it, I know my audience is very informed, it's that obviously you can speak here uncensored, they won't be able to filter it as much, and so you can speak directly to it, because this is what happens to myself, to Ron Paul, uh, to countless others that, that, that really try to shift the paradigm into really waking up to the larger control system, is they put articles out constantly. Alex Jones, you know, has no audience. Uh, Alex Jones wishes he wasn't discredited. Alex Jones is a racist. With no proof, but we know they're doing it because they want to assassinate the messenger. But the good news is they've already assassinated their own credibility, so they're shooting blanks. And I don't think in their arrogance they figured that out yet, uh, Billy. No, I agree with you. But just to give you a little bit of kind of, of context on the other side of it, uh, right after the Anderson Cooper thing uh, kind of went viral, uh, I know you put a story on your uh, site, and I, I gave a quote for that. Um, and when that sort of kind of ticked back up into the mainstream uh, consciousness, I probably did about 10 interviews in the next couple of days. And in seven of the 10 interviews, I was asked about the Anderson Cooper flap, and five of the seven uh, people who interviewed me had no idea it was for a charity. So that shows you that there is still a little effect in this because oh, I agree. counting on that low-information crowd to not, not go beyond headlines. That's it. They are targeting a low information crowd, but again, that crowd of zombies really don't even matter anymore. I mean, I'm sad to say that it's like they're almost not even people. They've decided to just mindlessly buy into this and this narcissistic, thin, mindless gruel uh, that's being spewed out. But speaking, speaking of Anderson Cooper, and then we're going to get into your album that I do think is one of your best in a long time. Uh, speaking of Anderson Cooper, he really is a CIA guy. He really was in the CIA, not just an intern. He really is uh, the uh, you know, grandson of one of the biggest dynasties in the country. What is it, the Astors? So he's a little rich kid, given everything he's got. He's failed. He has some of the worst ratings on CNN. So I would feel good, Billy, to just to have this, this, this joke, this failure that was given everything. I mean, you came from nowhere. I came from nowhere. He was given everything. He's the opposite of Americana. You know, I think what's interesting, um, to me, uh, you know, uh, I try to stay out of the personal side of it, um, although I did say the other day I wasn't born with a silver spoon on my arse like, like he was. Um, I think it's very interesting that um, there is a level of arrogance here. They, uh, that crowd, whatever that crowd is, and I've hung with them, you know, I've been in those rooms and so have you. I've been to those parties and so have you. That crowd really th thinks they can sort of flick us off their shoulder anytime they want. And what they don't realize is that people like you and me, are, we're just symbols of a much greater conversation. They don't understand that a, a, a vast uh, part of our country is waking up, uh, is breaking this hypnosis, this grip of hypnosis, and they can't see it. They literally can't see it. They do not think, they, they literally think they can just double down, triple down on these narratives and these false paradigms and, and, and the public's just going to keep lapping them up. Uh, and I think, uh, as we've seen from recent events, people are starting to sort of question the, the narratives, and, and, and you see the media, those old world medias, tr tr doubling, triple, quadrupling down on false uh, storylines because they literally don't have a B plan. I agree with you, and just the beginning of the questioning is the beginning of the end, because as soon as you question, you're no longer only in that narrow, low-information uh, media system. You now discover the wider world. You come out of Plato's cave, and it's game over. That is such an incredibly exciting thing. Uh, you know, I think one of your songs in the last album or the album before was about the world on fire, uh, and the lyrics really spoke to this. I remember we were talking like six years ago, and you were saying, you, know, you can clearly see crisis after crisis crisis coming, which is now here, but that out of that, we really could see a new renaissance. I think, um, 
I, I, I get the sense from talking to my friends and family, and I'm sure you know many of your listeners, uh, of course, which I'm one of, uh, those conversations that we had around the dinner table seven years ago, which were really difficult conversations to have, and people would just throw their hands up and say, you're crazy. Now people are listening. And just the fact that you're even able to sit at that table and have those conversations and be able to back it up with uh, statistics and uh, people, uh, you know, the failure of this uh, particular administration, um, the lying that goes on, and, and, and the fact that uh, there's this greater divide between the public that's awake and the public that's asleep. I mean, those that are asleep re- really do must, must want to be asleep because, I mean, how could you not be eyes open at this point? That's right. How could you not be eyes open at this point? And, and his mother was a Vanderbilt, the heir of the entire Vanderbilt fortune, not not a not a um, aster. But it doesn't matter; they're interrelated. And again, nothing wrong with being the last male heir of one of the biggest robber baron, horrible dynasties. It's just, give us a break, Anderson Cooper, because I don't even get into fighting with these personalities. But at the same time, I think it's important to not just respond and say, hey, I'm helping a cat charity, leave me alone. Don't try to make me you know, look like it has been when I'm not. Everybody knows that you've been popular all along and you've had big resurgences. Uh, I mean, it's just a joke. I mean, you've sold 40 million albums. Anderson Cooper is on a failed network that's converting to cooking shows. So I'm not being nasty, it's just they are dancing on their own graves when you are just having the courage to express what's already there. And as you said, we're like little tips of icebergs sticking up or little focal points, as Ron Paul always says. I mean, we're nothing. We, we are just like everybody else that is trying to find out what the hell is really going on. I can't disagree with you, and I think there's a democratization there um, in the way that we're all communicating. And, uh, you know, thank God for people like you for building these new systems by which we're uh, sharing information. And, uh, you know, we're building up our own networks of communication. I mean, I mean basically, uh, I would argue we're past the tipping point, and now it's just how is this all going to play out? And as you've been predicting for I don't know how many years, now we're seeing the rolling out of this, this next wave of control and propaganda. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that everyone's so prepared and has been sort of mentally prepared for what's coming. Um, I just want to point out one small thing because I think it's important in, in the context of the conversation we're having. You know, when, uh, when uh, President Obama was elected, uh, that night I went on stage and I, and, I, and I knew I was already listening to you. I was kind of like a half awake, let's put it. And I went on stage and I said, let's, hopefully, let's, hope, let's hope this is a sign that things are going to go in the right direction. And you actually ran a piece, and we didn't know each other then. You did a piece kind of mocking me or being another celebrity sort of buying, drinking the Kool-Aid. And, um, and I was thinking back to that time. I wasn't offended by the, by the piece. I thought it was kind of funny. But um, I remember thinking back to the time where I was in my own kind of awakening. And, um, you know, we have to remember, those of us that are awake, there are so many people that are they're in that horrible moment of like, wow, if this stuff is true, what do I do? And uh, we see that more and more now. You see people waking up, and it's, it's really shocking to them that they've been given a lie sort of all along. And uh, as you sit in bars and, you know, around coffee houses and talk to people about what's really going on, you can see that it's, it's not so much that they don't know that something's happening. They just don't know what to do about it. So we have to continue to prepare the way. And, uh, it, and uh, you know, this is not some uh, begging appeal, you know, to be supported as an artist. But what I would say to everybody is, is the artists, in many ways, are some of the most dangerous people in the world because we have that, we have that street credibility to go out and sing some gospel. And... Uh, and that's what makes me dangerous is once I get, once my career starts rolling in the right direction again, well, here I come because, well, how, how is it possible? I'm, I mean, they've tried to kill me how many times? Uh, and, you know, the Anderson Cooper is just a small example getting kicked in the shin. Um, and so it really helps. And I'm not uh, begging for uh, my own self, but, but please support artists, to support free voices, to support people like Alex, to keep speaking out, to, and, and, it, it, and it does require material support. Like, I'm a supporter of what you're doing with Info, uh, InfoWars Life, right? Is that what's called? Absolutely. Um, you know. Billy, I want to shift gears and talk about this more deeply because, and I use this analogy too much, I apologize, but but it's so accurate, I use it. 20 years ago, you couldn't find organic food anywhere. It was very expensive if you could because there was no market. As people began to demand it, it grew the market, prices went down, it's now displacing all the garbage, it's displacing the high fructose corn syrup, they're taking it out of Hershey's. We're taking it out of Heinz. Now, now look, 
there's still some fake organic, there's still problems. The point is we demanded quality, the market changed. And exactly, if people go out and support independent artists that are speaking out against tyranny, that's great music as well, and buy your album at SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com and then play it for friends and then ask that it be played on the radio or share it with their friends, that's how you bring the system down. You've got to go further and decide you want to promote cultures of liberty. I can't tell you historically how many kings, how many corrupt dynasties were brought down by a jester telling jokes that became viral in ancient times or by the uh, local band or even one guy with his, uh, they didn't have guitars back then, you know, one guy with his little mandolin or whatever singing songs about the corrupt nobility, that would change it. So, so a song or an idea that isn't in the hands of the system could bring them down, and that's why they target people like you. Yeah, you look. You know, there's there was a reason the CIA uh, was you know spying on John Lennon. <laughs> you know, um, you know at that point in time he was probably the most dangerous artist in the world. Um, well, and, they killed him too. Well, you know I can't speak to that, but I I'll say this much: um, if you look at the power that rock and roll had in the seventies, vis a vis the power that rock and roll has now, I think there's been a concerted effort to to uh, drain that those systems of their power. Um, because it's just too radical. It's just too dangerous. And 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 there's you know when you when you have the power of a, of a John Lennon or a Bob Marley, and they can literally have one song that will change the consciousness of the world and get people to look at something different. And I would point, and I and I'm saying this from a very uh, specific point of uh, point of view. Look at the lack of political music in the world right now, and compare that to the 1960s. It is unbelievable the lack of political and social discourse in music right now. You think that's an? Do you think that's an, an accidental omission? They came in and they took it over on record. Billy Corgan of Smashing Pumpkins fame is our guest. SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com. We're going to send out a tweet uh, of the website right now. We're going to post this video later today on Facebook and Twitter. It needs to go viral because he has a lot of courage saying what he's saying because they really come after people. And i got to be very careful here what I'm going to say about John Lennon. But they made a film six, seven years ago that won a bunch of awards that had the declassified documents where Strom Thurmond, the senator, and others said, we want him taken out. We know the suspicious way he was killed. I, I'm, I'm just going to stop right there. But I, I, I've talked to the highest level people and been told stuff about what really went on and then what happened to them afterwards and everything. And I can tell you, the FBI and the CIA killed John Lennon. And then they went on a campaign to cover up what they did with their patsy. And so that's why when we talk about this, folks, it's very dangerous. I mean, so so we're not saying, hey, we're heroes here. We're just saying, realize this isn't just your regular, sh you know, shuck and jive on CNN. I mean, we're really laying it out here. I think um, I think what's kind of funny about the modern life is I don't think they have to kill you anymore. <laughs> I think they just digitally kill you. That's right. You know what I mean, if anything, you're almost you're almost better as a sort of sort of living effigy. Which is why I think some of these people come out of the woodwork to try to like split my throat. I mean, criticize me as an artist, that's fine. There's there's plenty to criticize. But if you look at a lot of the subtext of the of the things that are written about an artist like me, it has a lot of a lot of times it gets in a lot of sort of false narratives, uh, moral equivalencies that have nothing to do with uh, music or art or love or people's lives. You just said it. You just said it. They create straw men that aren't Alex Jones or Billy Corgan, and then they attribute things we didn't say. They have uh, they have these campaigns. They send out fake emails that aren't from me, insulting people. They call people up and say it's me and insult them, famous people. Uh, they uh, spoof faxes, and, and I know it's the government and corporations, so believe me. What Billy's talking about, it goes on here all the time in, in, in an attempt to, to derail us, but it's not going to work because Billy Corgan and Alex Jones are just little bitty expressions like like a compound eye of a dragonfly. We're just one little tiny part of it. You can't chop off all the heads. Totally agree with you. And, and one thing I would add to that, because I know sometimes when I talk like this to people, they think, well, are you saying that everyone who works at the local paper is that? No, it's these systems are put in place and then they go out and they find uh, people who are not free thinkers to basically implement the program. Um, they regurgitate the national story. They're already the little sycophantic type that'll go with whatever the mindless pop culture narrative is.
Absolutely, and, I, and I've even had uh, off-record conversations like I know you have where people have admitted to me where they've had stories squashed. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, somebody makes a juice call and makes sure a story is squashed or a particular agenda is promoted. So when you're looking at, uh, you know, your local media and you see and you, and you go, well, this smells like propaganda, know that more than likely that person is not conscious. They are in a, they've put in, been put in that position because they, they're a proven bootlicker. Almost all local news is written in New York or L.A. or D.C. This is on record and packaged and sent. You tell them the local story and then they send down what you say. Or it's read off a teleprompter if it's a national story. Right. So, so if, there's a, if, you know, if there's a man in a high castle somewhere, uh, you know, there's not a lot of them. But they're, they're able to, through their, um, their control and their, and their media control, sort of manipulate the storyline. We, look, your listeners know, uh, you know, and I'm a listener, uh, you know, we know. It, it, these things are, I mean, we sit back, look, when, 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 when Ferguson started to boil over and, you, you know, you had uh, Jakari and uh, Biggs. Joe Biggs down there, you know, I was watching some of the coverage. And it's really interesting, you know, because, and it's so important that you do that because you're giving us... Uh, the real on the street perspective as opposed to the propaganda perspective. Billy Corgan, our own mind. stay there. Come back and finish up with that thought. Let's talk about the record straight ahead. We're on the march. Because believe me, they have targeted uh, Billy and his organization because of him speaking out on a whole bunch of issues. They don't like what they call loose cannons. They want people that will submit and go along with their whole agenda. Billy, I want to thank you for the gift of my uh, Bohemian Grove security shirt and real badge. I mean, real, uh, real, uh, shoulder patch uh, when, when i wear that out people say who in the world do you work for <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was great i found that in uh, somewhere outside of san francisco and it was like uh, it was like sitting on a shelf and i thought oh my god i gotta get this for alex <laughs> that is awesome billy uh, i, I, I want to get back into what you said about ferguson and more on the album before you have to leave us in that airport you're sitting in right now uh, but tommy lee uh, i had heard from folks that he was awake uh, I heard from somebody that worked with him on a TV show behind the scenes that he was all aware of the New World Order. I, don't, I know you don't want to speak for him personally, but uh, can you repeat what you told me during the break? No, Tommy's, you know, Tommy's eyes are wide open. You know, and, and you, you talked a lot of artists off record, and you, know, you and I have talked about that. I, mean, I think the, the general public would be shocked how much of the entertainment world um, is awake, and it's because they're behind the wizard's curtain. And Joe they, Perry's know, fully they, awake. Joe Perry's fully awake. I... I need to call him today, but uh, a lot of folks are. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I think the, the difficulty is these paradigms have been set up where it's like, you know, you have to stare down the barrel of a particular gun. In this case, your career. Um, like I said, I mean, what's the new what's the new paradigm? You're going to get digitally assassinated. You know what I mean? Um, I know there would be some people, particularly in the rock and roll world, that will roll their eyes at these kind of assertions. But there's a reason that that the that the great artists uh, get marginalized. They, they get sucked into things that have nothing to do with their music and. You know, they're, I, I'm literally everything I say now is trolled for quotes, you know, and, and I'm not saying it's all political. Some of it's just dumb stuff. But the, but the fact of the matter is, is, is this whole uh, business has risen up around uh, entertainment. It's big business, but it ultimately is about the disenfranchising of the artist's a vote in the culture. In essence, the, the, the constant message is artists' voices don't matter. Um, well, exactly. Like the, when you look at, like, what a Jimi Hendrix represented as opposed to your normal average politician, Okay, you tell me who's the more honorable person. <laughs> well, it's obviously Jimi Hendrix following his soul, his heart, trailblazing, uh, creating a heavy rock, heavy metal, um, and a true pioneer. Right, and so that's what I'm trying to say is, is uh, from cradle to grave, you know, there are systems in place, you know, you pick them, uh, you know, now it's common core, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, the, the, the 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 scholarship programs. All this—they're meant to take anybody who's uh, too bright, too smart, and make sure they're corralled into a system from the get-go. And uh, God forbid you exist outside that system and and, and prosper uh, as you and I have. And, and bless the Lord for the for the gifts He's given us. And I think both of us, and I know we've talked about this, we feel a great responsibility to turn those gifts around to serve others. And and uh, if it kills us, it kills us. But at the end of the day. Uh, we've got to trust the, you know, the man upstairs. Uh, that, you know, there's a greater purpose here uh, at play, and um, and and if if what if what what, you, if what we watched on the old, uh, you know, the old systems, the old uh, the mainstream media system, if that if that's truth, I don't want to live in that world anyway. That's beautifully said. I don't want to live in that world anyway because it is a fraud. It is a lie. I feel so empowered. 
Not that I have all the answers. I make a lot of mistakes. I say stupid stuff sometimes. I mean, I hear my show rebroadcast and go, oh, my God, that sounds horrible. I don't mean that. <laughs> but but at the same time, my heart's true. I'm trying to tell the truth. And, and more of what I say turns out to be accurate than what dinosaur media says. And it resonates with people. And then I just don't want to let them down. It's humbling to know there are so many good people that are awake now and, and looking for me for leadership or whoever. I don't think that's where the leadership is. It's in our hearts. It's in our souls. It's in following our gut. It's in doing the right thing, and it's in doing the opposite of what mainstream dinosaur media says. I, I want to ask you about this. Where do you and your gut, Billy, as you say the world's on fire, a previous album, where do you and your gut think civilization's really going? Are we going to survive? Will we make it to the next renaissance and beyond? Uh, and, and what do you think that fight's going to look like? You know, I, I, um, I hold my breath on that one. Uh, you know, there's a big fight coming. Uh, you know, it's one thing to listen to you talk about FEMA documents and, uh, you know, uh, executive orders that we don't know about. And uh, yesterday, I think you had on your site about the, this idea that it's now legal to spy on everyone everywhere for the end of time and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, these systems are going to double and triple down um, because, because they have no uh, alternate <laughs> plan. You understand? Uh, they've been in power for a very long time, and uh, whoever's pulling those levers uh, is, is not, they're not, uh, they're not, they're, you know, look, when a baseball team loses, they go, oh, we'll come back next year and we'll rebuild. You know, these guys are in it to win. Um, and, uh, and, you know, sometimes when I'm sitting around a table and, uh, and your name comes up or I say some things that I've learned through you and through other people, um, they get into like a kind of games about accuracy. Like, well, how can you know that that's true? And all I got to say again and again is like, look, come on, something, something's off here. Something's wrong. And, and people like you, people like me, we don't have to be accurate. <laughs> That's not our job. Our job is not to be perfect. We don't hold ourselves to be, up to be perfect. We don't hold ourselves up to be, uh, you know, uh, keepers or tooth tellers or something like that. We're just pointing at, as you often say, you know, you're just pointing and saying, uh, do you see that big thing that's coming down the road? I do. Exactly. And they say, well, what exactly is it? How do we know your eyes are authorized to say that's a juggernaut with fire shooting out of it, out of Road Warrior? And I'm like, uh, well, I came by another village. They said something that looked like that blew it up. Uh, so that thing looks scary. What are we going to do about it? And, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and again, I, I, would, I would recommend anybody the same thing. We don't, we, and I'm sorry, the, you know, the collective world that's awake, you know, let's extend it even beyond your audience. Uh, we don't have to be right. We don't have to be accurate. We know what wrong is. We know what wrong is, and we know a lot of what's going on is wrong. You know? Well, sure, they have this you know, fake moral authority where, where accuracy in media or where uh, media matters, remember the White House, or where uh, you know, they have that truth detector site or Snopes you know, run by a, a, you know, a couple in an apartment. They sit on the mountain and they say what reality is. And, I mean, anybody that starts telling you they have a corner on reality, well, that's who you really got to watch. Hey, if, if we reach a point as a, as a, as a race... Well, we do not grieve the loss of every child. I don't care what color. I don't care where they're from. You know what I mean? If we don't grieve the loss of every child, that's, that's, that's an indictment of us. You know? And we've got to be protesting for every child, every situation. Uh, you know, we need to have moral outrage where, where there's injustice everywhere. Um, and then when we see agendas at play, we have to step back and say, why is this more important than everything else? Um, we have to grieve for all of these things. We have to grieve for the GMOs. We have to grieve for the chemtrails. We have to grieve for all this crap that we have to face down. Um, and we have to pull together. That's what I mean. We don't have to be right. We don't have to be right. We just have to know. As long as we know, that's the power. Um, and and uh, I, I'm blessed to, to be one voice in, in the wilderness, at least uh, a free thinker. Um, there are times where it's very difficult in a musical life to struggle where, you know, the numbers don't add up and you don't get the advantage that you think you should get and all these things. And, and, it, and those are those hard days where you got to stare in the mirror and say, would I rather be on my knees, subjugated to some system that would ask me to be a, a, a robot, Muppet, something, or would I rather be a free thinker? And that's what I would say. I'm proud to be a free thinker. And if that means what it means, uh, uh, you know, a half full hall somewhere, that's what it means. Because I, I can't go down any other way. Well, you know my favorite quote by Mark Twain, he had a lot of great ones. In the beginning, a patriot is a scarce man, hated, feared, and scorned. But in time, when his cause succeeds, the timid join him, then it costs nothing to be a patriot. I was on over 100 radio stations. It was just unheard of when I was like, you know, 26, 27 years old, uh, and 9-11 happened. 
and it was just unheard of. And I was on a hundred stations, small mom and pop, some of them, but high ratings. And I was growing. And then the towers got blown up. And I said, no, the government's clearly involved. And those stations all called, most of them. They said, we're going to turn you off next week. Or we're going to turn you off next month when the contracts up, usually monthly contracts, if you don't stop it right now. And you know what? I didn't feel bad at all when Ted Anderson came in and he said, all these stations are turning you off. You just lost 10 today. Um, they're warning you. You got to stop now. And I said, Ted, I just can't stop. And it's the truth. And he said, I really respect that, uh, Alex. He goes, fine. You, you know, you have a place here on the network. Uh, you know, we're going to lose at the network at that time millions of dollars uh, over the you know years. And back then I was making hardly any money. And, and, I, and he said, you know, you would get you know, that. But he goes, I respect that. And, and he goes, so I'll lose millions. You're going to lose millions. Because I just hit the zeitgeist. I had just gone from like 20 stations to over 100. It was boom spreading all over the country because it was hardcore libertarian. The right wingers liked it. But I came out and spoke b bad about their God, George Bush. And, it, and, and I didn't even say he did it all. I just said, look, sh the government's running Al Qaeda. They let them attack us bare minimum. And, and I'm proud of that. And, and it's just like I'm proud of what you've done. But then I only got bigger down the road. But then it only gets scarier because then it's not even about being on the air or being famous. It is all about the struggle for reality reality and trying to find that truth. I think that's what you're saying. It's not that we're perfect or always right. We want the truth and we have goodwill towards others. I think we're talking about the philosophy, the philosophy of those of us that want to be free. Well, I think it goes back to your question of what, what do I think is going to happen? And this is, this is where it gets into a very tricky juncture. Um, we have to see what's happening, but at the same time, we have to be able to kind of step back and look at the, the larger narrative at play. Uh, if there are nefarious forces in the world, they are, they are willing to use our humanity against us. They are basically sociopathic. They don't care um, that babies die somewhere in the middle of some desert. Uh, they don't care, um, you know, that uh, kids are taking vaccines with the horrible things in them. Um, they don't care about the rise in autism rate. They're, they're willing to do whatever, however. I mean, they've proven that <laughs> again and again and again. So this is where we cannot get sucked into these false moral arguments. Those arguments are important, you know, like in talking uh, recently about some of the things that have gone on, uh, the protests that are happening post, uh, uh, is it Mr. Garner was the man's name? Yes. It was choked. Terrible. Uh, and, and then a, a terrible situation, and then what obviously what happened in Ferguson. And, you, you know, you get in these discussions, like I said, around the dinner table, and people think that you're uh, unsentimental or unfeeling. And no, it's, no, these are horrible. Of course there's injustice uh, in the inner cities, of course. Uh, you know, does that mean every cop's the bad guy? You say it all the time. I know lots of great cops. I know lots of great cops who are family people that would never do these things. Does that mean every cop's good or bad? No. We have to judge every person on their moral character. Uh, I'm, you know, somewhat friendly with the police chief of the uh, Chicago Police Department, Gary McCarthy. Incredible man. Incredible man. I watch where he grieves uh, over every situation uh, uh, because he, he's, a, he's a man. He's a father. He cares. Does that does it mean just because he puts on the uniform does he mean he's a bad guy? I mean, what about our soldiers? Are all our soldiers bad? Absolutely not. This narrative that's spun out all of a sudden, all of a sudden we got to be afraid of the soldiers. I'll take a soldier over anybody any day. Exactly. They've tried to dumb it down to the opposite of what Martin Luther King said: judge people on their deeds and what they stand for. What you just said. And then if you don't support all the rioting or whatever, you support the First Amendment but not rioting, then you're bad. If you don't say kill the cops randomly, well, I don't want to be killed randomly. I don't want to be, I don't want to see the blacks killed just because they're black or whites killed. I mean, it just comes down to civilization and basic common sense. Now, Billy, let's talk about your album. Uh, we just downloaded it uh, the other day from your site, SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com. I can't wait to listen to the whole thing. I, and I'm not just saying this. I love all your albums. And I really love your old stuff. This has a lot of the old sound, but even better lyrics. I think this is almost like classic Smashing Pumpkins 2.0. Everybody should go there. How do people get the record? Uh, you know, it's on all the typical uh, <laughs> Illuminati systems. <laughs> um, it's easy to find. That's not the issue. Uh, but thank you so much for that. Well, sure. I mean, it's in the stores. It's on CD. It, it's downloaded at iTunes. Folks can go find those links at smashingpumpkinsnexus.com. How do people support you? I guess they come to the big shows. Uh, they spread the word. I mean, uh, how do they do that? You know, um, that's a difficult one because uh, there is... Um, there is the commerce, which uh, is important, but honestly, it's more the street cachet. Um, uh, and that's what I'm saying is, uh, if not me, please find artists that you support. 
uh, retweet them, share them with your friends. The artists are the bulwark. Uh, there's a reason most totalitarian regimes kill the artist second. Of course. <laughs> They kill the weakest first, and then they go after the strongest, which are the artists, because they, they are the X factor. They are the voice in the wilderness that can point out the obvious, like, hey, look at that over there. You know, and they can do it in a very clever way. You know, if Jesus spoke in parables, so can we. Um, and, and it's very powerful. Music, as you know, penetrates, like, you know, typical stuff, which is why I'm able to go to countries where people don't even speak English and play music and communicate. It's music of the heart. Sure. Um, and, and I'm blessed to, you know, 25 plus years here and going. Still strong. Billy anyway, Corgan. Stronger than ever. Billy Corgan's our guest. Smashing Pumpkins Nexus.com. Retweet that. Put it on Facebook, folks. The establishment's scared of him. And anybody the system's scared of, you better know we need to get behind because they promote terrorist groups. They fund Al Qaeda. They, they fund all these radical groups. They get caught funding the Klan. They get caught funding radical racist black groups. They want us all killing each other, just like uh, one of the singers uh, that, you know, he just mentioned from Jamaica said uh, they want to see us go on killing one another top ranking and that's of course Bob Marley we're almost out of time I'm going to let you go so you can get that plane or get on down the road Billy I hope you'll come down to Austin soon and come in studio maybe I'll come up and see you in Chicago uh, but I really know your interviews here resonate with everybody uh, again uh, one more time the new album tell us what the name of the album means monuments to an elegy what's that mean Oh, I don't know, Alex. <laughs> These things come out of my brain sideways. <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, it sounds cool. I'm just wondering if there was some inside baseball to that. Uh, you know, I, to me, it's a bit of a kind of a, a wave goodbye to what people thought the band was. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm just trying to move on into the future. And, uh, you know, thankfully, with people like you, new media like you, creating these new systems, I'm able to uh, speak freely and speak to an audience and, and just, look, you know, try, try to find like-minded souls. We have to build these new systems. You are. Uh, and uh, and I'm, I'm trying to do the same. You know, we have to build basically systems that are stronger than these systems of propaganda and control, and we will. We will, we will survive and we will succeed. Well, it's happening, and, you know, as you said, we need to support artist, whether it was in Nazi Germany or whether it was in, in, in any other totalitarian regime, Pol Pot, Khmer Rouge, they would kill 95% of the artists, even ones that served them. They didn't like having them around. They were scared of them because that beauty, that touching people through music, through art, through images, that communication of archetypes that, that artists have innately. You don't even know what you're doing. You just do it and it reaches people. They are scared of that and that's what the tyrants are is little men behind the curtain who want to run the whole show and, and, and really I guess don't feel loved or liked. They feel rejected, so they want to dominate. Billy, I'll say bye to you during the break. 20-second final comment. Just God bless everyone. Just keep fighting. Keep the faith. I got to say, the new album is amazing. It sounds like old stuff you've done, but stuff I've never heard before. I mean, as you said, you've gone to the next uh, level with the new album and a monument to Elegy available.